Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome back to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today I want to relook at number 26 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. And I want to solve it in a totally different way than we did the previous video. Today I want to solve this one graphically. This is not the fastest approach, but I think for some teachers out there, this could be a really good one because it could help you introduce some ideas with graphs and definitely with absolute value graphs. I'll start by reading it over and then we'll work it out graphically. It says here for number 26, which of the following ordered pairs would lie on the graph with the function f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1? And last time we solved it using uh, these, order, these input outputs and we plugged them into our function. We found the, uh, the only solution here that c was the answer where when we input a negative 3 into this function, it was the only one that, that got the 5 that matched up. All these others, when we put these inputs in, they got different values here, which means they don't lie in the function. Now, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to solve it graphically. So a graphic way of doing it is to first create a graph. When we have a graph, we have a x horizontal axis and a y vertical axis. x is our inputs sometimes known as the domain. Y are our outputs, also known as the range. Each number line has positive and negative values. So I'm just going to go out a few points here. One, two, three. This would be positive one, two, three on the x-axis. And then one, two, three in the negative direction. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Now the origin here is always zero, zero. And then we go up, just for now, 3, down, just for now, 3. So this would be on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3. And this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Just a real rough sketch. Now we're going to look at our function here. It says here, f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. And right now, this looks very intimidating. There's so many things going on here that, that make it hard to see that it's actually not that bad. Like this f of x here throws a lot of teachers off. So let's just simplify it and write it as y, right? And this 2, let's for now, let's just bypass the 2 and just write the absolute value of x. Let's leave out the negative 1 for now. Let's just say this function was y is equal to the absolute value of x. What would that graphically look like? Once we have an understanding of what this one looks like, it'll be easier to, to figure out what this one is. Anytime we have a, a, an absolute value function, it makes a V. And what happens is all these negative values here, when we input that, these negative values into our function, x, y, negative 3, negative 2, 1, right? When we input negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is just positive 3. 2, negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 1 is positive 1. Uh, uh, 0 would be 0. So what happens is on one side of the graph, it creates this big V that roughly looks something like this, real rough. All negative values turn positive. And all positive values, like if we were to input a 1 in, and found the absolute value of 1, it would just be 1. And if we were to input a 2, it would just be 2. And input a 3, well, y would be 3. So it creates a v that looks something like this. Standard absolute value equation. Now, I think this right here is a lot more manageable to work with as a starting point than this. If we wanted to make this just a little closer to the, the actual function that they give, just a little closer, we could just do the outside, the downward shift. So we could add the minus 1. Now, what would the minus 1 do to our original absolute value equation? It would take this whole thing, and it would just shift it down 1. So this right here is our approximation. This is the graph for the absolute when y is equal to the absolute value of x. If we add in the 1, it would look something like this. Now, this is the graph of the y is equal to the absolute value of x. We shift it down 1. I'm not even going to deal with the 2 times the absolute value of x, because I think it complicates things too much. All right, I think it was kind of a tricky move that they threw in there. We don't even need to deal with it. We just, we're going to just work with this rough approximation. 
All right, so I know this is the actual function, but we're going to work with this rough approximation, this one that's not that hard to sketch out. And if you, if you feel like it, this still doesn't look close enough, we could just change that y into f of x and write it as f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1. These, uh, this matches up now, and it's very close to the original one. Now let's just see what happens when we plug in some of these values. And let's start with a, negative 7, 3. Where would negative 7, 3 fall? Let's see, negative 7 are the x inputs, right? So those are our x's, these are our y's. Negative 7 would be, let's see, if we kept this line going, right, we'd have what? 4, 5, 6, n negative 7 here, down negative 3. It would, it would be way out here on our graph, right? It's not going to lie on our graph. So we could cross it out. What about this one? Negative 3, 7. Okay, negative 3 at, for the x's. Negative 7 for the y's. That's, that would be going on the y's. You know, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. That would be way down here. Negative 3, negative 7. Nowhere close to either one of our approximated graphs. Cross it out. Let's do D. 5, 3. 5, 3. Well, we're doing positive 5, so it's 2, 3, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're down negative 3 over here. Rough approximation. When x is 5, y is negative 3, nowhere close to being on our graph, lying on the graph. That phrase there, lie on the graph. This, none of these points, a, b, or d, look like they li would lie on this graph. Now our last one, our, rich, our answer that we identified as the correct one in the beginning was um, this one right here, negative 3, 5. So if we just plop that out, we have a, a negative 3, or 5 would be maybe 4 or 5. It'd be somewhere here. This is just rough. Rough, 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 rough stuff, okay? But here's the thing. Even, even though it's very rough, all right, and this is not the exact uh, graph of this function. I think this is enough to say, you know what, this point right here, the negative 3, 5, that might fall on this graph because these others are way off, okay? The actual graph of this uh, absolute value function, remember it's 2 times the absolute value of x, so it means it's going to be a little tighter up, and the tighter up would actually land on this point right here. Okay, team, this is just a real quick way of solving this. If you create a quick sketch of your graph and map out a rough approximation of the absolute value graph, um, even, if it's a, even if it's a simplified version of what they actually give you, you should be able to fairly quickly eliminate some of these points that don't even come close to being on your graph. And that's going to help you get to see a lot faster. All right? Okay, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, we're holding workshops in math, science, English, and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI, these are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.